We'll start off. I've had this video of Cayman for a while now. Red spot. You guys think who wants to take it? I think he can do better with sending his butt bags first. A little more. I agree. It kind of just drops straight down and very, very upright torso. So I love that. But I do think I do think those hips can shift back and bend down more. And then you see like right there, there's this like weight shift and it kind of, he kind of goes into his toes. And that's why that's happening. Because he's flat, 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 flat. Kind of pushes him forward a little bit. It's just the hip needs to be a little further away in the bottom of that squat, a little more balance. See, I agree. That was a lot of reps, dude. Holy shit. That was a lot. I thought it was going to loop, and it just never looped. <laughs> no, there's, those are four or five different sets. I just put them all together just for like – Oh, the, you just spliced oh. them really – you spliced them really well. I thought I you think were I was doing ripping. sets of – I think I was doing like sets of five or something like that. I thought you were ripping like a 20 rep max here. Yeah, hips back and down definitely needs to happen. I think that will give you more support – um, with the feet and just better weight distribution, weight in the heels. Um, I think I have what something about, else too. Yeah, I was going to bring up like when he finishes, I feel like he doesn't lock out all the way. Yeah, the, the arms are like, they're a little soft, I would say. I meant the legs. <laughs> oh, you see? Oh, I'm looking at the arms. I think I'll the arms, away. yeah. I gave away what I was going to say, I guess. <laughs> um, I was just that. Let's look at the legs and then we'll go back to the arms. You're seeing it specifically at the hip, Lisa? Mm -mm. The knees, like even on the first rep, like before he goes. Oh, wait, go a little more back. You mean when he starts? I see what I see what you mean. Yeah, like they're soft. Mm -hmm. They're not like totally standing. Definitely, like, not the first thing I noticed, but something you can just cue, you know, especially because Cayman does like to do some local comps. Like, I don't think any of those judges would even notice that, uh, but it's just a good habit to, to be in. I was looking at the hip. Like, I think there could maybe be a, a, a more of a butt squeeze at the top, too. Like, it's just, it's not like he's, like, keeping it back, but it's just, it's soft, I would say. Not the biggest deal, though. Squat depth's good. Need to finish a little more. I think the arms could use. Um, do you agree there? Mm -hmm. It looks to me, and I think the only reason I can kind of like maybe figure this out, it looks to me that like Cayman is just stacked so well that he doesn't really necessarily have to put all of this effort into a drive, but he's stacked so good. I don't want to say he's relaxed but he can kind of get away with not being very active. Do you feel like that when you're overhead squatting? Like you're just perfectly balanced? Yeah, I used to um, have like a, I don't know what direction this is called. Internal like rotation? Forward. It would put a lot of strain on my shoulders. So I've been actively trying to like lock them back like this. So yeah, I'm stacked. So it's like I'm, I'm holding it, but it's not like I'm really pushing. Your external rotation is great. Like you're not even it's it's hard to even keep that in the bottom and you're not even rotating a little bit there. Uh, but yeah, I just think there is more tension that we could we could definitely have with those arms. But your external rotation, like in that focal point, you're doing a phenomenal job with that. So external is what you want, internal is what we don't want. It strains the shoulder. It also strains we have our UCL or ulnar collateral ligament in here. A lot of load, internal rotation. That UCL is like the only thing that's holding that elbow together, and you can strain that as well. Um, and that's one that, I, if you're internally rotated and it did tore, it would be like a Brooke Wells incident. Like your elbow would just come unlatched, and it's not that it breaks, it just dislocates. Um, and that's what happened to her. I think, like she had a 
already partially torn UCL because she had that um, elbow sleeve off, and then she just caught that snatch not in a perfect position, and it tore the rest of the UCL, and the elbow came. came in. So, Nate, I also have um, kind of a question, and maybe just a comment, but there's a question behind it. So my understanding is if you are externally rotating – overhead, you're going to have more access to use your lats. Yes, if you're that's correct. Rotating, you're going to have more access to the middle traps and lower traps. So you would want to external rotation, rotate because the lats are a bigger muscle group versus using the traps that are not as large. And, and with the, the external rotation too, the pec can get engaged with it. So yeah, you are correct. Like the lats are going to get engaged a lot more. And it's like, you have these two bigger muscle units that are engaging around and with the rotator cups of the shoulder, rather than losing those two big units and our rotator cups and our traps are what's taking it over, trying to hold them in place. Like we're just basically internal rotation, shoulder, the shoulder's not in the joint like we want it to be one. And then we're asking these little muscles to support two versus external rotation shoulder is now in as well as our big cast so yeah you're spot on with that um it's a hard one now like i would say when you guys are overhead squatting like pay attention to even though you're external rotated in the top when you do just start your descents a lot of people like to internally rotate so you have to fight that the whole time um you guys have watched like Maddie Rogers and, and E snatch. And we talk about the punch through and how quick their turnover is. Watch their external rotation and look to see where those elbows are as well. That's part of the reason they can be so fast. There's no wonkiness that's happening here too. You can see it beautifully on those two athletes. So I took the video off. Do you, have it? you guys have anything else? I think we got everything on that. So I guess my, my question then would be, we have access to the lats, but the lat is a pull, is a, is, is, we use it by pulling. How is it being utilized by pushing? Because our, 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 our lats are a core stabilizer. So yes, our lats pull, but they're also part of our core. So like when we think of our core, don't just think of abdominals, obliques, um, spinal erectors, like pretty much think of everything. If you cut my head off away from my shoulders to my hip crease, every muscle that exists in that region is a part of my core. It's like if I went to a concert and it was a, like a symphony playing and there's some dude that doesn't know how to play the flute, we're going to hear the dude that doesn't know how to play the flute, right? We need everybody to be on point with it. And the lats are just stabilizing one, making sure the thoracic spine is not going to move, but then it's also think about what's 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 right under that shoulder blade. It's our lats, so it's also a supporter of those shoulder blades as well. So I guess that makes sense. I guess what is happening there is an isometric contraction that's happening, yeah. and that is what's creating the stabilizing effect. Versus we're not concentrically contracting, which would be us essentially drawing down. That would be the down and the pull. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. Though. If you like, if you think about it, okay. So our, our lats is a, is a pressing muscle when it comes to that down, right? It's not a pressing muscle when it comes to like pushing up. But if I'm pushing up, I need to be against structure to be able to push against, right? If there's no structure underneath and I'm pushing up, I'm now losing energy down. So when the, the lat stabilizes and gets tense, that's our, that's our concrete floor for our shoulders and for everything else to push against to go up. So when we talk about sh like shoulder press, for example, you know, we want to squeeze the legs, we want to squeeze the butt, we want to get all tight here, and then it's, we're pumping it up and everything's tight. We're just creating this, the, the, the bottom to be able to push against for our energy to go up into a barbell. Gotcha. Versus you stood on a... You stood on a floor of jello and you tried to do a 30 inch box jump, probably wouldn't go well, right? I just made that one up. Pretty proud of that one. All right, let's go to the next.
I don't know what you're doing here. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet, but one of the movies. It was a bar. It was a bar. I figured we had uh, watched from the, the Mayhem workout. Yeah. What a great wad, by the way. Right up my wheelhouse. <laughs> Of course, no I like one, it. no one could finish this. This is like it was like a bullshit wad, like fifteen. Hundred reps. Shows the bar? Yeah, fifteen reps every round. I was like, come on, there's no way, bro. I got done in five and a half rounds. <laughs> I was sentence, guessing dude. maybe ten percent of the gym can RX this workout. It hurt though. I, I do agree with you. So just for reference, guys, what Justin's doing here, I don't know what these reps are about to look like, but it did put you in the state of like very fatigued. Shows the bar. Like I got down to doing a couple singles, and I never do that. Um, it was a minute on, a minute off, seven bench press, max toes the bar. Your workout's over when you hit 100 reps. You had eight rounds to get it done. Um, so toes bar did need to be very efficient. And I do agree with you. Majority of the membership base is not going to do 100 toes the bar. It may be 100 knee raises or 75. Like there is 100% going to be a scale with most people. It was not an easy workout. What do you guys think? I was stoked. I got 10, um, unbroken. I was getting my legs a little bit straighter, which that's been kind of a goal of mine here. So like all my pulling work I've been doing, like finally. It does look good. I love how Justin's yeah. like, fuck this workout. But then he's like, I was really happy. <laughs> You have really good uh, flexibility, like in your hands. Amazing. You are folding like a book right there. Yeah, that, that was like my main goal. First thing Straight I in. actually noticed. Yeah, amazing flexibility. Yeah. So let's let's it, it's great. I'm very happy with this. Let's make it better. Mm -hmm. So he's got this very gymnastic pipe. And I think the clue word here is gymnastic, right? Because he's folding like this, I have no issue with the way he's doing these at all. But I need to definitely create more. Okay, So I think where this improves a lot is going to be in the bottom and in the arch more than anything. You guys hear that? Yeah. I like, I that. Um, like maybe he could have a little bit more tension. So, yeah, just trying to get tension. And what I would say is like, I would actually probably cue Justin, not necessarily, hey, let's try to keep our legs straight. I would try to cue him to get very long. So if I pause it, we can pause. So if I get him in the arch and I pause it here, right? Try to get as long as you can off the bar. Like if you were gonna try to touch your toes, like to the floor back here or to that back like corner where the floor meets the wall, try that. Cause I think what you're doing here, you have great balance. Right, you have great mobility, which we definitely need for a very pikey toes the bar. If we can get that tension and you can try to get really long and create this stretch effect, you're just going to start to whip out faster of the arch into the toes the bar, and you'll increase your cycle time and you'll save a little, little bit of energy. When these knees break, there's like this moment of relaxation, and it's requiring you to like put a little more like muscle um into each rep than I think you actually would need to. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was... Like, there's almost like a little half, half lag delay, and it's not like a real snappy back into it each time. What were you going to say, Cayman? I think, Justin, I think they look awesome, dude. Um, if I was your coach at this, this workout, I would focus more on coaching for efficiency for you because there's so many reps. Yeah. So I would do like the tension or have maybe a little bit more of aggressive hollow and C and D or whatever to, you know, prevent ab fatigue. 
Um, the only other thing I would suggest is, you know, jumping into the toast bar as opposed to the halt at the hang and then working your way into it. Because, again, it's just, that just comes down to the efficiency. I think it looks awesome. I think if this was like speed, what you're doing right now, you could rip through those much very quickly. But when you have such large sets, I like to do a little bit bigger kits just to, again, prevent some of the ab fatigue. Yeah, if you watch um, – a good example, too, is if you watch some of the higher-level competitions – um, and they have these big sets of toes to bar. You don't see, you actually don't see a lot of like knees into the chest and kicking going. It, it's, it's more, much more the gymnastic, the longer rep that like came in talking about more like you're doing here because they are trying to utilize like the full energy of the body and the full, um, elasticity of the hip like, with that tension. This workout would be, a, I think, a really hard workout. Like, you're in the middle of this to, to just, you know, try to get you to, like, correct that, like, real time, real speed. So I would say, like, don't worry about necessarily, like, sets of 10. Like, in your warm-ups, try to set to four or five practicing that tension. Probably going to feel a little weird initially. Um, but when you can get it down, you'll start to feel, like, you get to this point and it feels like everything from your shoulders all the way through like at its max stretch and you just need to get back to normal that's what it starts to feel like when you hit it well but super stoked with these i think anytime you're ripping sets of 10 that's a really that's like a good toes of our feet especially in a workout well let me make a couple comments so this was my very first set the only set i got 10 of then i was going to break it up into like um eight and five eight and four so i got 15 on the first round, then I ended up going down to 12s and like 10s and 8s. Um, kind of like the comment that came and made about starting position. Like I've been like, I've asked this question multiple times. I just can't do it, basically. It's like can't jump up and get right into like a hollow position. Like I, I have to get my hands all resituated, my thumb underneath it. Because I try what you said. And yeah, you definitely do that here. Up, You're wiggling like around. Long and then bring it under like i just i tried it i struggle with it and i was like whatever i'm not gonna even try it here um but i'll also say the to that gonna, the last thing i was going to mention too is that i'm breaking a little bit more at my knees than i have in the past because i was having problems getting my toes to go back far enough to count it as a rep so i was getting close to having some no reps so i was like man what do i need to do to get my feet to come back behind me enough to count and that's what I was kind of having to do to, to make Trying to like play with. So, all right. Let's say we, we, we take Justin here and he does. He straightens out the legs. He gets into this nice tension, but that's happened because that definitely does happen. What do we need to change? I don't even need to play the video here. What do we need to change for him to have a little bit more room to get those feet behind the bar? Just put a little your jacket bit on, on the bar more and get your shoulders behind it. No, because you're thinking about the arch in this in this point. Oh, Bring his chest bottom. through more. Yeah, the chest has to come through. If the chest is going to come through more, and he's going to be able to get into a little bit more of an arch, and it may just be a game of like an extra inch. Like it may not be a lot at all. He needs to have a good rep. So if the chest needs to come through, what do we have to adjust with him on the bar? His hands. Widen. So if he if he's too narrow, he's not going to have the window to get into an arch like he needs to, right? He needs to maybe just very slightly widen the hands so he's got more shoulder flexion so he can get more into that arch. And if we do look at his hands here, I'm not opposed to a little bit of a narrower grip on toes of bar because I think it can add some good tension easier for people. But I would say, like textbook speaking, hands do look a little narrow he does have room to widen it out which would give him more shoulder flexion which would allow him to get more into an arch and if he's more into an arch where are the feet the feet are further back and they break the plane of the bar and now we have a good rep with extension make sense yeah that makes a lot of sense so your feet yeah, so, have to on the like at the bottom in the arch your feet have to pass the bar yeah, so you've got that that imaginary line. Yeah, your 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 standards would be both feet have to get behind and, and break that plane, and then technically two feet at the same time. Um, doesn't matter how you get there, other than that. But uh, not a lot of people 
to do that anymore, but we used to see like these dudes that would bench press a lot and they have very tight chest. They would do toes to the bar and they don't have any arch at all. So they just use their root strength and they kind of come down and they stop themselves and go back up and they never break the plane. So it does happen. Um, I have a comment about toast bar just in general. Um, I was hey. talking to somebody, one of my one of one of the people at my gym, and they were having like a shoulder impingement. And they felt it was because when they were coming through the bar on their toes, they kept their, their head looking down or even horizontal as opposed to like looking up, which they straight open the chest more and had some of that more upper upper um thoracic flexion. So I just wanted to comment, see if you have any opinions on that. Um, yeah, I could definitely see that. Like they were looking literally down. I, I would I would go to say that's probably a pretty pretty awkward position. Um I see more people look up at the sky, uh, which technically you should just be be straightforward. Um I think I look at the bar though and it's never affected me. Yeah, looking down I think could be a uh, a weird position, like a potentially neck tweaking spasming position. I mean just think about when you're sitting at a desk all day. Sitting at a desk all day, looking down at your computer, how many people have neck and upper back and shoulder problems just from that? And they're not doing tip swings on a bar, you know? So I think that very well is likely. That's a, that's a weird one. People usually look down when they squat. I haven't seen it on gymnastics much. Uh, I don't know what this is about to be. I'm going to guess it's a power move. Let's play it a few times because it's a quick video. Rapid fire. It's like Grace. What do you guys got? So he gets a little bit tozy. Now it's pro it looks pretty heavy for him. I'm wondering if he can, when he receives it, if he can bring his butt a little bit further back, that'll help him stay on his heels. That's what I would triage is the lift. I would go for that first. Because, like, is the setup perfect? No, I think he could have more tension in the shoulders. But overall, like, it ain't, it ain't bad, right? He takes off pretty well. The shoulders and he actually goes for shoulders and his hips go together pretty dang decently right and everything else looks good he's got a little elbow bend but extension's good but his landing his landing everything's definitely shifted forward like he landed in his toes one um i would say his hip his hip isn't like chasing his femurs but i think because he's so forward in it it like it takes away from him landing in, in, in a much more powerful position. And I do think if they, if the butt, the butt being down and back would make him have a much stronger land. Cause I think if you tried to hold him here and you said Ooh. freeze, he ain't stopping there. No. He's either going to do a weird shift back into the heels or he's more likely going to chase the bar forward for five or six steps. So, you know, he gets right out of it. And look, even when he gets out of it, he, he has to take a step forward. Um, so I think the butt really getting, making sure the butt's back, which he doesn't do bad here, but like being in the heel suit. And what do we know about line of action? When that butt doesn't go back and down on a squat, we're not in our heels. So they're, they're, they're a little correlated here, I think, in this clean. Um, His right honest, heel never even hits the floor. Yeah, you're right. He literally never puts it down. When I first watched this in real speed, let's play it real speed. It looks like he, he almost starfishes for a second. But mm -hmm. then when you slow it down and you actually look where his feet are, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, it's not perfect, but it's it's actually probably pretty close to where he squats. But I, I think the biggest takeaway here is just for sure that landing. What's a, cue, what's a good cue you could probably give him? Real simple. Try to land on your heels? Yeah, stomp your feet. Yeah. I would say stomp your feet. Okay. Um, and that may just solve it just right there. Um, 
that's another good cue to yell through, like, say nice and loud, let the class hear it, you know, stomp your feet, you know, so-and-so stomp your feet when you get down. Someone else hears that, they're going to stomp their feet as well. So it may be happening. I think this is a very common fault that we see um, when, when you're looking at Olympic weightlifting and you're looking at all these other real nuancey things and you just kind of forget that this person's landing toes first and not flat-footed. So look, look for that. I have a comment and it kind of leads into a question about this. So I know uh, this is my one of the athletes. Um, he's like super athletic. He does these amazing box jumps. And so he was doing these box jumps and what I noticed that he does this box jump is that he never lands on the heel. Everything is just all like toes and midfoot, kind of like what we would see here as he lands. And like I actually tried to do the box jumps like that, and I couldn't do it. It was just like my heels want to come down for like support or stability or whatever. Um, what do you think about that for box jumps? It makes me nervous is my first thought. When someone's only in their heels all the time, right? And it's 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 they're basically getting the spring out of that that spring loaded system with the Achilles and calf and the structure of the foot. It makes me nervous because it's just it's not just the person's hundred and eighty pounds they weigh when they're jumping. That's getting multiplied. I forgot what the number is. I think when you run, it can get multiplied by up to sixteen. Um, so I'm sure box jumps and box jumps quickly, we at least have a multiplier by probably eight. It makes me nervous just for Achilles and long, long-term long health of what's going on down there. Um, I would prefer someone I, landing in the toes is fine, especially when you're getting ready to rebound and like jump. But like it would be a land in the toe, the foot would relax. And then what is a box jump? Like, let's think of why do we box jump? I mean, because you're you're extending your hips, so it, it does actually yeah. transfer to to the lips. I, I want I want the explosivity of the hips, right? right? I'm not box jumping to be a kangaroo and have very springy calves. I meant box jump overs. I apologize. Ah, same thing. Box, like like they're they're jumping, they're landing on their toes, and then they're probably doing the same thing on the other side, right? Yeah. So I would say the same thing. Box jump over. Well, I'll get to that too because it, it they're. I think the intent of it is a little more, a little different than just a traditional box jump. Um, but we, we generally do want to preserve that. So I think the land, you land in your toe, the heel comes down, and then we jump again and open that hip up is really what we want versus just being like a, um, a pogo stick on, on the heels. And if you think about running, running's the same way. You want to land the ball of foot, but we don't want to stay in the ball of foot. We want to land ball of foot and the the heel relax and it kisses the floor. And there is a contact point, but we just don't want to land in the heel. We also don't want to land ball of foot and stay tense because then we also just blow up our entire lower body as well. Box, jump over. I think the box jump over is, a, is I think if, if I'm going to, if I'm going to program it and I'm going to decide whether I want a box jump or I want a box jump over, a box jump, when I really want to preserve that hip extension and explosivity and have that translate um, and like the original why and translate into Olympic lifts, I'm going box jump. If I want to spike the heart rate more, maybe elicit like a little bit more of like a quad stamina. Um, and I also want to be able to set a much clearer standard for something like competition. I like a box jump over a lot more because now we're not worrying about is did the person actually stand up and lock everything out? Is one person getting away with a little bit of a bend and the other person wasn't? Did one person actually have control on the box or were they falling off? So it clears things up as far as like a standard goes. And I think it's also for training purposes, an easier movement that I can spike up your heart rate for the intent of why maybe I'm writing the workout. Does that make sense? So I think don't ever be married to either box jump or box jump over. Have your different reasons on why we're doing that. Can you remind me or, or remind us the the difference of, you know, what muscles you're using more of when you land really low on that box jump over versus if you land tall? I think one you're you're using more quads and the other ones you're not. 
as much. Because I remember there was this game. Sorry. Uh, there was a games workout that some of them were landing low on the box and some of them were landing tall. And I remember the announcer mentioning, yeah, they're trying to save, I don't know, so, something because they have this other movement. So it, if you if you land, I don't want to say land tall. So like, I, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Not necessarily landing on a box jump over and like standing up, but just landing like it's a power clean right. and then maybe going around. That is right. going to tax your quads a bit more versus that person that lands and they kind of land in the bottom of a squat. And right. they're relaxed. Yeah, they're probably just trying to save the quads and save the legs more okay. than saving like that tall power clean landing. Um, I also think when people land in the bottom and they're totally relaxed, that can be a comfort thing too. Like if someone has poor mobility and they have issues with stuff, landing in that like relaxed squat position may not feel great. Um, so it's going to be a lot more comfortable for them to land more in that power position to get off rather than like bouncing in the bottom. Okay. There may be more to that. I think, no, I think that was that was what I was asking. You know, well, if you're landing high, if you're hitting landing high or low in a squat, you should still be using those the glutes and like the hamstrings, just like a. They're regular, still going to be right. So yeah, maybe there's... it's more about the takeoff, like the more energy on the quads to jump that high to get to that level versus just getting to the box and sitting to the bottom. I don't know. That was the only thought I had. Yeah, that that may be part of it. Like they're more they're more pulling their feet high rather than getting high. With the jump, um, you can also think of it as like when a coach holds y'all in the bottom of a squat, and you have someone that just goes down there and they just relax. How much easier is it to just relax versus when the coach comes over and they're like, "Hey, come up an inch," and all of a sudden you have all the tension in your legs? They're both squats, but they're very different feelings as well. Um, so you may be like on point with that as well. It may be a combination of all of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I go back and forth. And I will say when my quads start start, uh, start to burn is when I start to land in a squat because I'm just like, this hurts now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have to pause because of like muscle fatigue. Well, like a good rule of thumb is like, <clears throat> if you're going to be more toesy, you're going to be recruiting more anterior front muscles. If you're landing more in the heels or just more posterior, you know, you're going to be posterior dominant. So yeah. basically if you're landing in your toes, like, the athlete I was describing, he's probably more quad. Very quad, yeah. And that that's a great point. Um, because we can we can definitely think about like how are we landing on top of the box, whether we're in the bottom of the squat or not. You know, are we landing on top of the box in our toes or are we landing flat footed on top of the box? Like that's a great point and a great a great small detail to probably pay attention to with, with uh, people going through. Hang snatch, I believe, right? And we got a tactile cue. Yes. Make sure your coach is paying attention. What do you guys think? I don't feel like they went, they looked better on the squat as Pretty I good. went through them. The first one was kind of wobbly, I think, like at the bottom of the squat. Yeah, I see what you mean, just a little wobble there. I'm happy with these. Yeah, I have to look. <laughs> I've got to look at every single piece to try to find what you're doing wrong here, which is a good thing for to make me start to do, right? Like, I got to watch your feet. I got to watch your extension, your turnover. I think I would maybe have one little coaching cue. Mm 
and it's minor. And I think it starts to have a little bit more to do with the fact that you're getting fatigued through the set. I'm gonna play it halfway through. Actually, let's go the whole way. See what you guys think I might say. Hold on. Actually, pay attention to the angle of the shoulders in the bottom of the shoulder. I like it. Very tall. Shoulders lead the way. Still a nice rep. That's rep two. She's going to five. Right, watch how that angle slowly starts to change. That one she teetered a little bit, right? The shoulders just came a hair forward when she went to stand out of the squat. Happened again, teetered a little bit again. You guys see what I'm talking about compared to the first two reps? Very minimal. I think so. That one you see the, a little bit of a wobble. It is. Super slight here. I think your posture, and I'm talking like millimeters, like you start to go, your shoulders are up. Let's go back since the last. You see how your chest is almost dropped a little bit, and like your angling of your of your arms like start to want to rotate in. And it's not that you're losing it and you're externally rotating, but you're having to fight so much more of like you're landing in your squats like, oh, it's starting to want to take me forward. I would I would slow you down, especially when you're starting to get fatigued. Don't worry about receiving and shooting out. Receive and then have like the pause if you need to, because this isn't super heavy because you're doing five and focus on when you start your ascent to make sure that those shoulders don't have even the most minimal teeter forward, right? And I'm being extremely nitpicky because these are very nice reps. And I think you did do a good job, by the way, with the flicky turnover that you normally do. These are not. That's why she has that PVC pipe there. Um, but if I add on 30 pounds and we're trying to now PR our snatch, that little teeter goes from quarter of an inch to a inch and you fail a lift, right? So when we see these just little deviations in movement, even though they're not a big deal and it's, it is a nice job trying to just get it that much closer to perfect at her 50% or 60%, whatever this is, is going to translate into those one rep max attempts and things like that. So even though I really don't have much to say, but really nice job, I'm going to say on your next set, I really need you to focus on getting out and having those shoulders lead the way on it because it's also going to help those shoulders stay stacked and that fight that she's having to like go against that she wants to internally rotate as well. The more stacked we are, the easier it's going to be to stay in that external rotation. Okay. The moral of that whole thing, you guys are watching athletes move or you feel yourself move. Pay attention to those and, 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 and ask yourself, is this good? Yes. Could it be better? If the answer is yes. Is this, is this thing that could be better? Is it going to get exacerbated the faster they start moving and the heavier they start going? If the answer is yes, and most of the time it probably will be yes, nix that shit in the butt. Fix it before it becomes a big problem. I really like that PVC cue. Diana, how far was that from your bar? Was it just like an inch or two or was it? Yeah, like like an inch or two. As close as it can be without, you know, really smacking it and hurting somebody. <laughs> what, I, what I will say too, um, great cue. I use it all the time. When you guys are actually coaching, get more like in front of them. I don't like stand in front of them necessarily, but like if you're right on the side, what I've found is you have people that if I'm here with the PVC pipe and they know it, they start to do this. And they'll start to turn because they know they can cheat a side that I'm on. So if you put that PVC pipe like in front of like closer to where their hand like is and it's on like the knurling of the barbell, they can't cheat and turn anymore. 
and they have to stay more straight. So just be aware of that if you are going to use that cue because I do love that cue. Um, you can also have people do a high hang and they can face the rig and they can do like high hang snatches and muscle snatches. Just make sure they're not going to also hit the pull up bar. Which um, is I do that all the all the time. That was actually part of my warm up because you know you were telling me I was being no, flicky. you get flicky. So I, that was part of my warm up. I did like thirty of them just with the PVC in front of the rig. Beautiful. Um, I have it on. I think I have it on my Instagram, and I think I actually have the example video. Is Diana doing a oh probably snatch? <laughs> so I'll put it in our group so you can see that drill I'm talking about. Um, it's a great warm up drill, easy to do every day. Do it with a PVC pipe or like an empty barbell. Um, and it really just helps getting strong turnovers going. Let's try to see one more. By the way, these are pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. How do we make it better? So, what do you like about it? Since you agree, it's pretty good. She has good control going down. Her full body is coming down with her instead of just her yeah. like her chest. Very in control. I love it. The hips. I always look at the hips. Are the hips ascending and descending? They are. So then I know she's been working. You know, she's been working on muscle ups. When she does her muscle up, I know she's been training her dip. That's going to translate here. She's not just doing like a push up, and the hips are staying the same. So yeah, I love that. She's also staying pretty tight, right? She's not flailing out. What don't we like about it? We can look at body position here. I mean, maybe she could squeeze her butt a little bit more. Look at her chest. I, mean, I think she needs to I don't get disagree. her chest a little oh, lower. I, I don't disagree. Yes, she could squeeze her butt. She could be in a better hollow. Absolutely. Probably just not the biggest takeaway. Um, what did you just say, Issa, about her chest? She's got her chest lower. You're talking like, about just, like the range like, of motion? Like more. Yeah. So... I love her range of motion. If I look at her shoulder and I look at her elbow, like shoulders lower than the elbow, she's got a really good range. Um, the fold over part, I think she's already teetered plenty. Um, I wouldn't cue her to fold more because then if, if, if my middle of my hand is, her, is the hip crease, then we start to do this like push up on the ring and then I don't have my hips moving up and down. So I would be careful with that cue because I need to make sure that her full body descends like he was saying. Um, notice how her chest flares way out. You guys yeah. see what I mean? She kind of looks like a, I would say it looks like a dolphin for some reason. But isn't that because we're kind of weaker? Our chest muscles are a little bit weaker? Yes. So that, so they addressing and trying to make this better is, I think, actually going to partly come off of the rings. Um, the question is, is it, is it, do we just need to get the pectoral stronger so they're in more support of this press? Could be. It could also be that they're just not firing well. So we just maybe need to turn the pecs on better to get them to actually function better to assist in the dip. The reason you see people do that really big flare out is they, they're not getting the help they need from the chest on the dip. So they're trying to get into like the shoulders a bit to try to assist those triceps. Um, so... Obviously, you guys know a million different strength, chest strengthening exercises. Just simply do push-ups, you know, bench press. Um, I'm putting tempos with that. Obviously, would be phenomenal. What are some good strength uh, chest tech activation stuff we do? 
it, I, I think you showed me one with a ball with a med ball and you like squeeze it or something you can do uh you can do this it's like awkward med ball carry so it's a med ball in front you're not allowed to touch it with your hands so you're holding the med ball with your forearms and get a you know like a 20 pound something that's a little more challenging and you just do a carry with it and you're forced to squeeze it so you don't drop the med ball and then just starts to turn on the pecs over time what are we basically doing when i do that I mean, you're, you're activating your, your pecs, no? Yeah. I'm basically doing a pec fly, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So like I could probably That's prescribe nice. flies, even though we don't do flies all the time in CrossFit, probably a really applicable uh, movement to get those things fired up and just awake. Um, so what I would actually say is if we can, we can start to get to the point where she's staying a lot more upright and not flailing out. We've got more chest involved in this dip. And the dip potentially is going to be that much better. But I would put some of those things as like a, a warm up, not to the point of like this massive fatigue, but to see if it, if, if I put it in a warm up and I get the pecs fired up, then it's going to tell me, is it just an activation issue or is it going to tell me, do we need to get the pecs to stronger to be in more of an assist for you? So definitely, I think she's doing a phenomenal job with the dip, which she's working with. Um, but we'll see if, if one of those two things helps it. Any other thoughts, questions on that? Yeah, look for that. Next time you have dips in your gym, see those people that start to flail out like that. Gives you a big clue in what's what's actually going on there. All right. Well, if y'all don't have anything else, I'm going to prep for class. Um, is there any... We went through all these coaching topics for Tuesday. Is there any topics you would like to see come come up next week? If not, I'm gonna start to pull pull randoms. You can text it to me if you think how, something. How about I don't remember if we've you know something I would like to go over warm ups. Oh God! Warm ups yeah. and warm ups, and then let's let's do something else. And the way we did our whiteboard brief last week, where we had this anatomy of what makes a good whiteboard brief, we'll we'll have the same anatomy of what makes a good warm up. So that'll be part of it. And then what were you going to say? We probably have time for another. Have we gone over like people with disabilities? No, I don't think so. Maybe we can do that. We can do that. I would say if we want to do that, let's try to in the chat or you can just side text me any of you guys this week, like specific things. Because if we just say people with disabilities, there's 10 million different yeah. types of things we can go over. Um, so, you know, maybe we can be like, you know, what if someone can't, you know, comes in and, and they're in a wheelchair? What if, you know, different different types of stuff like that? Um, yeah. And maybe even like some like mental disabilities as well. I like, like that. I'm prepping, I'm prepping for an autism client right now. And I have some very specific um, specific things that I know is gonna happen. So like I'm sure it you know it goes across the board. So we'll try to like get that. So we'll go over like mental disabilities. Um, and then if you guys have any other stuff you want to see, like you know, wheelchair bound, anything like that, text it to me and, and we'll try to prep and find us. Love and that. Others. All right. Got a good plan. I will see you guys next Tuesday. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all.